Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. Failing in business can be devastating for entrepreneurs, especially when they give it their all and end up with little or no success. This happened recently to a young and budding South African entrepreneur, Sbusi Songwenya, known as Skin is Boo. He established a brand of colorful socks which trended as Happy Socks, a fashion style marveled at by fashionistas in social circles. Happy Socks trended for a while until recently when the business reportedly went down. Zbusiso then took to Twitter and expressed frustration that he could not take it anymore. Now, failure can happen to anyone who's studying a business. Our focus today is on why do businesses fail and what can be done to save them. Zbusiso Nguenya, a.k.a. Skinny Zboo, joins us in the studio. So thank you very much for coming to our program. For, for a moment there, I thought you were talking about AKA the rapper. All right. <laughs> no, we, 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 and we also have Tulani Tabete, who is from Tulani Solutions. Thank you very much for making time as well. It's a pleasure. Sir. All right, I'm going to start with you, Sbu. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your concept, the idea of happy socks. How did it come? Um, well, Skin Spoo Socks is five years old, you know, and I, I w want to demystify a lot of things about South Africans. Yes, we are at our startup phase. This is not an idea. This is an actual business that's been running for the past five years. Um, it was established from my passion and love for socks. Um, and I, for the past five years, we've been really struggling, uh, just like all brands, with distribution, you know, how to get to the customer. Um, our brand is a premium brand. It, we are building something sort of like a Cavella or, or one of those brands. But it's, it's a very new phenomenon or idea in the African um, context. So we will, you will have your ups and downs. You will have a lot of people resisting. Um, previously, we've been available at Spree, um, at Starter Forts, which closed down at the end of 15. And currently, our socks are being distributed at Markham stores throughout the I, country. I'll come to that. I just wanted to get the concept of how did happy socks really appeal to the market what made it tick thank you very much for saying happy socks again I'll, I'll educate people happy socks is a swedish brand two swedish guys came and established a, 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 a brand called happy socks these are skinny smooth socks whenever you see a logo similar to this one triple s you're looking at skinny smooth socks colorful socks have been there okay so, so so now you see what we call a uh, brand confusion yeah mm. So right. they, we, we call, we call um, toothpaste Colgate, mm -hmm. all of us, you yeah. know, or petroleum jelly Vaseline. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with colorful socks. They are not happy socks. These are skinny smooth socks. They happen to be colorful socks. How has socks. the South African market taken your brand? We've been around for five years. So that should tell you that um, South Africans have been receiving us with uh, a lot of, of, of great love and support and been showing us <laughs> their money. What went wrong? What went wrong? We're in our fifth year. We need to take the business to the next level. That is what went wrong. Um, versus when I started out five years ago, when I was selling the socks out of a brown paper bag, I am dealing with 20 national stores, 27-year-old me, from my own pocket, and I have to feed that animal. That is the problem. What led to your frustration? Whew. A number of things. A number of things led to my frustration. Um, but the biggest one would be, would, would, would be, would be just um, the bigger the business grows, it's the more it demands a lot of your money. It drains a lot of money to speak to a national audience. You know, I have to make the socks myself. I have to design them. I have to distribute them. I have to market them. And that's a very um, expensive exercise. That should give you a bit of numbers. Um, starter Fords, I was doing um, less than 20 stores in, 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 20, in 2015. That exercise alone in 20, for the whole year cost me 800000 So I'm not selling a product that people necessarily need. People need socks, but people don't need fashionable socks. So my daily job is to shove down people's throat something that they don't necessarily need. Right, now let's come to Tulani. You deal with business solutions. SMMEs are struggling in South Africa. You can get the undertone of his business failure that it was entrenched upon scaling his business. What, what then happens? I, I think firstly to, sh to start off with is um, I'm so glad that uh, Skinny Smooth's situation has come to light. And the reason for that is that 
the failure rate of SMEs in this country is shocking. And that's not the, um, and not a lot of light has been shed on to why that's the case. And I think we need cases like this to be able to understand what, would, what it would take for SMEs to move into the next level of business. Now, um, in, in a case of Skinny Smooth, I'll tell you one thing, right? Um, generally, we love to support, or, or in fact, the perception has changed. We love to support each other in business. However, if there, are key, there are key number of factors that uh, have led to the situation to what it is. Um, from outside in, I can tell you now, he's mentioned it himself, um, brand perception is, is very important. And, and with the understanding that we all call Colgate, um, Colgate, we then have to say, in my business, how can I ensure that I don't repeat, uh, in fact, I unequivocally be able to set my business apart because if you're thinking you're buying skinny smooth socks yet you're supporting a guy in Sweden by buying happy socks that starts to cause a downscaling from his business so instead of now um, his uh, volume increasing what do they do they become stagnant investors stay away and the growth opportunity gets shrinked. So it's a number of factors which we are at Tulani Solutions would be very interested in doing a very a case study on the situation. I like the point that he mentioned earlier. He said that people don't <coughs> need uh, these kind of uh, socks, but he has to shove them their throat. And with regards to uh, the general business distribution, he has to feed that animal. What do you make out of that? He mentioned that he's doing currently four things, which one of them is marketing. I always say to SMEs, focus on what you're good at. If marketing is not your inherent skill, if that's not what you understand, it doesn't matter how beautiful your socks are because at the end of the day, they have to appeal and they have to sell. So if that's not you and you don't have the skill to do so, that shoving down becomes a nightmare whereas it's supposed to be a breeze. Now, the element of sustainability in a business setup is very important. Like I said at the beginning that it trended for a while and then there was the downside of it. Tell us about a brand that trends for a certain period. Let's say it's seasonal. So it's very important to understand why does a brand trend and also have a business forecasting in terms of with that idea, how long can you keep that trend going? Because then you have to then understand that as soon as that hits its epitome, you now have to understand what you have to do next to keep it trending and to keep it going. So when the hype came, I'd like to say he's actually one of the pathfinders in the space because before we knew of all the other socks, we knew of his socks. So suddenly everybody else joined in the bandwagon and that's when the change was supposed to come from his brand. When everybody joins in the bandwagon and does what he does, so now confusing everybody, he, that's when his brand was supposed to take a turn to a different but level. Gents, can I say okay. this? Mm -hmm. I cannot sit here and, and be criticized. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And listen, and I fully understand that. Listen, listen to me. Right? The issue here, it's not marketing. Mm -hmm. Right? The issue here is that, you know what bl uh, uh, biz small businesses need? Mm -hmm. We need money. Of course. We need, we need funding. We need an, uh, the government to create an environment for us where we're able to easily access money. I am saying to you, the frustration came from me using my personal funds to still continue growing the business. I've grown it to a level where it is beyond my power. Do you have a national brand okay. that you've been running for the past five years that's being distributed at stores throughout the country? Do you have? All right. Okay. Now that you're questioning the status quo, mm -hmm. I, I, I like that element. And of course, we're not here to criticize you, but mm -hmm. we're here to question the status quo regarding But I feel like we're not, well, I feel or, like we're right. not getting to the solution or, or before, before of you it. Before you internalize it, mm -hmm. let, let us just play the ball, not the man. We're talking yes. about business concepts and business failure. I would like to bring you to confidence that we're not really smashing you. There, there's a notion that Unless you have failed once, uh, you cannot succeed. Mm. What can you tell us about the downside of your business? What have you learned? And what is it that you think you can have sort of a dead cat bounce? You can come out of that failure and be a strong brand and succeed like other entrepreneurs who have failed before and who are doing well now. Well, you know, I don't have a, a straight answer right now to say what can I do to come out of the situation, you know, because I'm in the middle of it right now. I'm at the center 
of the problem. But I've failed many times. As I, as I told you right now, when I was, what, 23 years old, I was in debt of 800,000 from the debt I acquired at Starter Forts. And I, acquired, I, I, I went out of that debt by working extra hard. I do not have the nitty gritty details of how I work hard, but I worked extra hard to pay it off, you know. But um, what, what I think the focus then should be on is how, how, how do we collectively, as South Africans, make sure that um, we, because I'm, I'm not a unique case. No. I'm representing a number no. of guys. I know a number of guys, about Tepo, the gene maker, a number of guys who are in my situation but have never came out and say they have a problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to understand the mm -hmm. issue of sales. Mm -hmm. Are you getting enough support? Are you really getting the numbers that you have forecast? Um, it depends on which business you're talking about, you know. So Skinny Spoo Socks is divided into three divisions, mm -hmm. right? The Skinny Spoo Socks direct sales, where you can come on our website or we're selling at a market or something. The Skinny Spoo Socks um, retail, where previously we were starter forts now with Markham and are targeting other retail groups. And then the Skinny Spoo Socks corporate division. When it corporate, for example, we just did socks for Capitech staff members throughout the country. When it comes to that element, we are doing okay. Um, when it comes to direct sales, we're doing incredibly well, you know. Um, people would come and buy product from us. But when it comes to, to, to retail, that is where we're seeing a huge struggle. What is draining you? Because this is really personal, because you have mm -hmm. to give your, your personal mm. belongings to this. Mm. What is really draining you personally and that you feel that it, it's, it's a monster that has to be obliterated and you are really, really frustrated. Mm. I can, I can see mm. where even when you sit here, you are angry with us. You're thinking we're criticizing you. I'm, I'm angry at <laughs> I'm everybody. Op open up. What, uh, what listen, is frustrating I'm, I'm angry at everybody. I'm angry at everybody. And I'm hungry. And I want more. And I cannot hide it anymore. It's been five years of trying to uh, build Africa's Tom Ford. Africa's Tommy Hill figure. And it gets frustrating when you're... You don't meet your targets. Well, what do you the want to happen? What, what, what I what want to happen see? right now, I need I, 2019 to keep the business up and be profitable. I need uh, a cash injection of five million rands. Okay, <laughs> to learning. I don't need solutions. Bus I need I need five million uh, rands. Business solutions. That's your area of expertise. What What is your suggested solution to a problem like this? To an entrepreneur who could be in the situation that Tulani finds himself in. I, I think it goes without saying that. I'm sure you've heard of the term, uh, it's, it's not personal, it's business. In business, you can't get emotional. You need to take the emotions out and focus on but the But you need to I'm, understand I'm, I'm, right I'm, now yeah, let that let I do not need, I do not okay. need solutions. Okay, Tulani. I need money. Okay, Tulani. To I, take I'm, the I'm business to the no, 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 uh, let me in, in the interest of this discussion, mm. I need to hear that point. Mm. Please continue. Okay. I'll give you your closing remarks. Okay. Let, let me hear that. It's very important that we understand that our generation is, in fact, we are the pathfinders in business. Okay, we don't come from generations of our great fathers and everybody else leading us in business in particular. So there's, no, there's many a times where we're going to hit the walls. There's many of the times where we will not have solutions in some instances, which is why it's so important that if you're a business leader, you have to be teachable. The spirit of being teachable, you have to carry it with you. You can't know it all. For an investor to invest in your business, one of the major forecasting that they look at is your, is your sales. That's one of the main things that they look at. For me to give you five million, I need to know that I can get it back. Okay. You've got to prove to me that you can give it back. And that's where now we need to tackle it. Your closing remarks, sir, moving forward. Um... I just want to thank everybody at home for supporting Skinny Smooth Socks for the past five years. Love you, man. And for us to, the, to go to the next level and really um, take the business mainstream, because the numbers have been clocking in, really have been doing nothing. I, I want my brand to be available across five big retailers in the country. And for me to achieve that, I, I need a lot of cash injection. But, but I hope that you know that anger is not going to work for you, right? I'm an angry black man. No. Okay. All right. Uh, that, that's our interview for now. Our focus has been on why do businesses fail. And our case study has been Skinny's Boo Socks. And thank you very much to Skinny's Boo as well as uh, to Lani. Gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to take a break now.